Hey, what's up, Chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today is the big day, and I mean that because the 50 amp hour frame mounted battery for the MotorGoat V3 has finally arrived. We're gonna go ahead and put that on the bike today and uh, just go over the whole install process. But all that, guys, and more in today's video. Are you excited or what? Because I sure am. Anyways, let's go ahead and get right into it. This box is pretty heavy duty, lots of staples on it. I can imagine why, because this battery is heavy and the last thing you want to do is have this thing come flopping open and transport. Guessing this is the charger. Look at that bad boy here. Output 71 volts, 11.5 amps. Should be able to charge this thing in just over four hours, which is pretty nice. Ooh, wow. Look at these nice color directions. You know, when I see stuff like this, Really makes me wish I could read. This looks like a upgraded uh, kickstand and compensate for the fact that the battery is gonna add a significant amount of weight. Battery cable here. Holy crap, this thing is heavy. Check it out, guys. Nice branding on there. It's got the goat silhouette on both sides. This is a nice looking battery unit. And this looks like a battery blender. According to my scale, this bad boy weighs 51.8 pounds. It's funny here, looking at the directions, the first couple of steps are showing you taking it out of the box. Well, thank God those are the directions, right? Because I would have never figured out how to take it out of the box. I would have just left it in the box the whole time. Okay, first thing we gotta do here, we're gonna take off this, we're gonna switch the kickstand out. Okay. Out with the old and in with the new. Says to remove these bolts here. Like there's four Allen bolts underneath to remove the saddle. This is the motor goats controller here. Pretty cool, huh? Get a closer look at the heart of the motor goat. There's the 50 amp controller you can see here is my little zip tie job. Because when I got this from the factory, it was just flopping around all willy nilly like in there. And uh, it made a lot of noise and it drove me crazy. So I put this zip tie around it to keep everything nice and tight. Okay, we're gonna install the battery blender now. Here, here's what this little box says if any of you guys are interested. Dual battery balancer, 60 amp times two and plug in this you know just plug them in wherever they fit guys taking off the uh, top cover of the battery now that's pretty nice we're gonna go ahead and affix this to the bike now i'm gonna put those strips in first and it has this 3m tape backing on them i'm gonna give all the contact points a nice wipe down to the these 3M tape strips stick as good as possible. Got our rubber strips taped in there. Now let's affix this frame to the bike. We have all the screws in there. This frame is in there nice and tight. Now I'm gonna put this battery back into the case. And I like how the case has rubber all around it, so it feels like it's going to be in there nice and tight and not rattling around. Make sure to replace these rubber blocks on the top. Put our little goat door back on here. I was unable to get just one bolt back in here, at least on my bike, and that's because the way this frame had the contour to my goat. Okay, now we're gonna route this cable now that we have the battery in place. So yeah, that's why they want you to route the cable like this. Okay, I should have everything plugged in now. I'm gonna just make sure the bike turns on before I put the seat back on. Just the frame battery plugged in right now. I wanna see if the bike turns on. No. Yep, now it's on. Press this but little button here on the side it needs to be pressed in. Okay, so this is uh, showing 67 volts, so it doesn't have a full charge, 78% on the charge. Uh, it looks like the wiring's good. All in all, guys, that actually wasn't very hard to do at all. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the seat back on, and I'm going to plug this thing in, and we're going to see how, many, how much power this draws. Okay, I've just plugged in the charger. 
And look at that, guys. It is pulling 906 watts. That is crazy. So this is an 11 amp, 72 volt, 11 and a half amp. So that is a huge draw. Overall, I like the fit and finish. This looks like a nice quality unit here. Cable goes in. It really, uh, the install is uh, fairly easy overall. Keep in mind I'm filming, which added an layer of complexity. But uh, overall, I like the way it fits in here. Or to the other side here. Nice little goat emblem here. Looks nice. It looks factory. It looks like it fits. One thing I don't like, um, this hole didn't line up here, which coincidentally kind of worked out because I over-tightened one of these and snapped one of the bolts. So I have five of the six bolts in here, but I feel it's going to be fine. All right, guys, we did the initial install. It's going to be charging overnight. Next step, we're going to take it for a test ride. But we can't do that tonight. We'll have to do that tomorrow. I'll catch up with you then. <sighs> All right, we are out on the motor goat now. I have to say, first thing I noticed is before I got on this bike, I have to move the bikes up and down my uh, stairs. I'm on the second story. And boy, let me tell you, this bike is heavy now. That being said, now that I'm on the bike, it doesn't feel much different at all. You do feel the weight a little bit in the bottom, but it's hardly a problem. I know some people report that uh, they get a couple of miles an hour extra because of the voltage dip, but we'll see. We'll see when we get there. I feel like with this, with the 50 amp hour battery and the 25 amp hours, 75 amp hours of uh, capacity on here is ridiculous. I got 38 miles on here with just the 25 amp hour battery. So you should be able to get a range of about 100 miles or more riding, you know, fairly aggressively on this bike now, which is crazy. And I think a lot of people haven't really caught on to the fact that, you know, these e-bikes are very useful for commuting purposes. And you get a bike with 75 amp hours of capacity and a charger that can recharge at 11 amps. So with that 11 amp charger and a, this main battery, you can recharge it in about a little over four hours. So, you know, you're gonna get that 50 amp hours of range back within four hours, which is very useful. So like I mentioned before, this is my favorite bike for commuting around town. Just because it's fast, it's got pedals, so I feel like, you know, as absurd as it is, it's like it doesn't matter how fast you're going, as long as you have pedals, it seems like the cops don't care at all, at least around here. So yeah, you, get, you guys can just zip around town really fast on the motor go. Where a lot of other e-bikes can go 30, 35, this bike like easily goes 30, I'm going 35 right now and I'm not even really trying. So this bike is really fast. So if you want to like get across town in a short amount of time, this is the one for you. This is my favorite commuter bike if I'm gonna be riding on asphalt. You know, sure, the e-motos are faster, they get a lot of attention, and uh, they're harder to lock up, they're heavier, you know, there's a host of things with the e-motos. This is my favorite electric bike to commute on across town, but that being said, it has a lot of limitations. This bike is not good at off-road, and it's gonna be even worse at off-road now that it's uh, got another 50 amp hour battery on it. But yeah, this bike is what it is. This is a little motorcycle and it feels like it when you're riding, especially with these street tires. It's just fun to zip around. You feel like uh, Tom Cruise from uh, Top Gun. But so far, so good. The battery's doing what it should. I wanted to update you guys in my review. I mentioned that the battery gauge was not updating real time on this bike. And somebody in the comments mentioned that if you update your bike using the Bike Go app, connected to Bluetooth to your bike, it will automatically update. And that's what I did. And lo and behold, the battery gauge does update in real time now. So update your bike, guys. If you have a motor goat, update it. But unfortunately, it does not fix the odometer and tripometer being linked together. So as of now, you still cannot reset your tripometer without resetting your odometer which is just mind-boggling to me that that's a that's a real problem that seems like it'd be so easy to fix man this bike it just cooks you know having the excess range may not be for everyone but i happen to really like it uh, the stock range on this bike i feel like is pretty acceptable especially if you're not riding and you know in full power the entire time you can get pretty far on this bike 
But I have to say, I have a dual star e sales bike, and having the dual batteries on that and the extra range it provides, it just opens up a whole nother world of rides. I rode home from Treasure Island on that bike, which is about a 50 mile ride, which is uh, something you can't really do on the stock setup. And that's another thing with this bike, I'm going to be able to ride ridiculous distances. So it's going to open up a lot of possibilities as far as commuting or rides you want to take or whatever, you know. This bike is going to have absurd amounts of range. And with that faster charger, say you take a lunch break, you plug this bike in for an hour with that 11 amp charger plus the uh, 4 amp stock charger for the top battery, because you can they do charge separately still, you'll be able to put an incredible amount of range back into this bike within a fairly short amount of time. So. I think that's also makes this more usable. Yeah. I like electric motors and all guys, but I like pedaling too. Especially in the morning when I'm going to the gym, I want to pedal because I get warmed up. By the time I go to the gym and I start working out, whether or not I've done a whole lot of work, I'm warmed up by when I get there. When I leave, it's like I'm getting a little bit of cardio on the way home as well. So I really enjoy the fact of pedaling. And so I just saw this bike and I was like, oh, this bike's not, you know, you're not even going to pedal. This bike's pointless. But I pedal all the time when I'm riding this bike. I do feel like I get some exercise, but I'm just also hauling ass in the process. So it's made my commutes to the gym in the morning very enjoyable. Sometimes I'll get bored, you know, I'll just try different routes. I'll do a bunch of different stuff. You know, and now I just took a couple little bumps. I've gone off some curbs on this. And uh, well, I wouldn't do anything too crazy with all this battery weight, just the way it's mounted and everything and the way the suspension is on this bike, I mean, you can still take, you know, moderate bumps. I definitely would not do any jumps with, uh, with all these batteries on here though. All right, we're gonna go up this hill. Some people say with the bigger battery and the voltage sag, you're not gonna, it's gonna have a little more power. We'll see. I think that might be offset for the fact that we're carrying an extra 51 pounds on the bike, but yeah, we're going up this pretty steep hill, no problem, throttle only. 22 miles an hour. I do like the power delivery on the GOAT, I always have. You know, it's definitely not designed to go up hills, but with the amount of power this thing puts out, you can go up a lot of pretty steep hills on this bike. Okay, once we get on the main road here, we'll try the top speed test. So throttle only, guys, we're at 40 now, 39, 40. Still going 41. 42, going up a slight hill here, 42.43 now. Still going up a slight hill. It was cruising at 41, 42, going up a hill. 43, 44. Man, this bike is so quiet. I don't know if that's coming across in the video at all, but it's just, one thing with these direct drive motors, they seem like they just float along. They don't have any, uh, they don't make much of a noise to them. You can hear it at a low RPM, but not once you get going. Okay, we're gonna go downhill a little bit here and we'll definitely pick up some speed. 45, 47, 48. I'm not gonna stay on the throttle too long, but yeah, guys, there you go. This bike is definitely quick. Um, have no problem with cruising at like 42, 43 miles an hour on the throttle only. Keep in mind, I'm about 245 pounds. Plus I have a backpack on with my gear right now, so probably on 260 pounds worth of weight on the bike right now. That's me, plus that extra weight of the new battery. So this thing still has no problem going over 40 miles an hour. One of my favorite things about the motor go goes eyes is the ability to create chaos doing this. That rear tire lock up on this bike is so fun. Especially when there's people around, you get some good reactions. So one thing I wanted to point out is um, now that that battery's taking up the whole gap in the frame, it's gonna require a different strategy to lock the bike up because before I would lock it up through that hoop in the frame right there. Okay, so we did it. It's just a little different strategy. So now I have my Hiplock DX1000 going through the main hoop of the frame here. I have my cable going through the rear wheel. And in the front, I have my Hiplock D1000 going through the wheel and around the fork. So if somebody wants to steal this, they're going to be in for a long day. Unfortunately, though, these batteries are not secured. And uh, 
you know, somebody if they know could take the batteries easier, but I feel better having it locked up like this at least. All right, guys, so you have it. There's my initial ride with the Motor Goat V3 with the 50 amp frame mounted battery on it. So I'm showing 94% on the battery gauge, typically just going to the gym, hard riding, I have 80% left. So guys, this can make for some absurdly long rides in the future, this is what I plan on doing. Because if you're interested in purchasing a Motor Goat V3 or the battery itself, you can use the link in the description of this video. Use coupon code shoot the chit for 5% off and that works site-wide. So if you wanna buy a Power Goat, Motor Goat, any of them, you can use my coupon code and it does really help support the channel. Unfortunately, there's one more thing I have to do and that's drag this thing up the stairs. In case I don't see you again, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Yeah, this sucks, guys. This is heavy. Whew.